good evening everyone uh, i'm truly humble here to uh, speak in front of uh, such big dignitaries and uh, experts in poultry industry i sincerely thank uh, professor devagoda for giving me this opportunity to speak uh, in this forum and uh, as professor mentioned in the beginning itself uh, we have to respect everybody's time so in the interest of time i'll not take more time i'll try to be very precise to the topic uh, given to me so to start with our major focus is to work on silk pupae meal so uh, our company uh, we have an r&d unit uh, at uh, sir m vishweshwaraya institute of technology we have a production unit at uh, dodbalapur industrial area so we have been supported by uh, government of karnataka and uh, government of india through various schemes uh, we are also supported by state bank of india and we acknowledge all of their supports so to start with this is the timeline of our company where uh, we we received a grant of uh, 50 lakhs from biotechnology department to work on various value added products in 2013 uh, since then uh, we started working on various waste materials coming out of uh, agriculture industries which can be used for human and animal care applications in 2015 we incorporated a company and we started uh, uh, working on this uh, concept of uh, wealth from waste and in 2018 we established a pilot scale production unit where we started extracting omega 3 fatty acids from uh, discarded silicone pupae and now uh, the remnant after extraction of omega 3 fatty acids is also used as a uh, feed ingredient in aqua industry which can easily be extended to poultry industry now Uh, now we have a pilot scale for facility as i mentioned in dodbalapur industrial area uh, very soon in a period of 3 uh, months uh, we are putting up a new facility in uh, gauri bidnur industrial area where uh, we target to produce 5 uh, metric tons of uh, silk pupa dry silk pupa every day that's our target uh, by october we are planning to launch this uh, product so the major vision of the company as i mentioned to you india produces more than 1 lakh metric tons of waste pupa 1 lakh in the sense it's a wet pupa uh, every year and uh, which can be easily converted into omega 3 fatty acids both for human and animal care applications and uh, the le leftover after extraction of this omega 3 fatty acids is rich in uh, uh, proteins which we will be discussing in detail and this omega 3 fatty acids can be used for poultry industry to produce uh, designer eggs initially we started our project with uh, making omega 3 fatty acid pharmaceutical grade omega 3 fatty acids for human applications uh, with time we realized that uh, uh, human applications requires lot of approvals and uh, uh, it was a time consuming affair where we immediately started using this product into poultry industry where we will be able to get designer eggs uh, enriched with omega 3 fatty acids so there is always a problem in uh, sericulture industry where there is price fluctuation the uh, the prices keep changing uh, the cocoon price keeps changing uh, and therefore uh, there is always a need for by product development which will give additional revenue for the farmers this is the, this was the major pitch that we started with uh, and uh, right now the cocoon price has gone up to 1000 during pandemic it was even 100 and 150 per kg where all the Uh, farmers were in under loss and uh, we were also invited by honorable cm to discuss how the price fluctuation will can be controlled during which we proposed this uh, idea of converting wealth from waste and stabilizing the price of the cocoon industry so uh, to just tell a very brief about uh, this uh, silk industry to tell a very brief about this silk industry uh, if you see the silk fabric the cocoon the uh, if you see the cocoon part only 20% of the silk cocoon is converted into fabric whereas remaining 80% which constitute of pupa is discarded as waste india is the second largest producer of silk which uh, india produces 135000 metric tons of cocoon every year that means approximately 33 metric tons of raw silk is produced and remaining everything is a waste if you see the next side if you see the material balance for every 1000 kg of cocoon that is being produced only 200 kg is converted into fabric whereas uh, 80% is converted into silk waste that means approximately 33000 metric tons of dry pupa is available to us uh, to be utilized in poultry industry the wet pupa amounts to about 1 lakh metric tons 
uh, which is uh, simply discarded and an environmental hazard. So the, there are more than uh, uh, 1 lakh uh, silk reeling industries uh, in Karnataka and the, this uh, silk reeling industry uh, simply discard the waste uh, in various uh, landfills and which is already an environmental hazard. So current applications, it, it's being used as uh, fish feed in aquaculture. It can immediately be used uh, for rearing free range eggs and uh, it, it is already, uh, as Professor uh, mentioned, it is already used as a delicacy in Korea, Japan and several northeastern states. Uh, and it, uh, the major problem that is uh, currently a uh, problem in this industry is the infestation of silkworm pupa. The silkworm pupa gets infested from other insects and there is a lot of putrefaction, degradation of amino acids and uh, fatty acids and uh, difficulty in transportation, logistics and bad odor which is already an environmental hazard and creating a lot of contamination in the environment. Now we have come up with a patented technology where we will be able to solve all these problems together. So the major problems that is being faced in silk discard is first it is an environmental hazard, uh, we, we land filling, uh, imagine more than 1 lakh metric tons of silk pipa being discarded in uh, various isolated places in Ramnagara, Shidlagata and Chikbalapur districts which uh, fortunately is high rich source of protein and fatty acids which we, we were simply discarding it and it is also having lot of therapeutic molecules like uh, uh, DNJ, deoxynogerimycin, gamma aminobutyric acid, quercetin which all these three materials have uh, very good immunomodulator properties. Unfortunately, these are being discarded without proper utilization. This is the first problem. When you see the next problem which can be, which this problem can be used to solve the next problem is India is highly deficient in omega-3 fatty acid. Uh, all most of the populations, more than 80 percent of the population in India are malnourished with the omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, either uh, both uh, below poverty people are also malnourished. Even in cities we are undernourished because we don't have proper nutrition. Because most of the omega-3 fatty acids comes from expensive sources like fish, krill, shrimp, flaxseed, etc. Uh, we, we don't uh, get a proper amount of omega-3 fatty acids. Lack of omega-3 fatty acids gives rise to several disorders like uh, brain related to brain and heart. Uh, this problem can be solved if uh, completely if we can completely reclimate the silk industry waste. So our technology, we utilize supercritical fluid extraction technology to extract omega-3 fatty acids from silk pupa. We have established a pilot scale uh, unit in uh, Dodbalapur. Now we are scaling it up uh, to 20 times of this capacity. So, the, uh, as Professor mentioned, the major problem in this industry is the collection and immediate drying, controlling of this uh, infestation and uh, other uh, microbial loads within this uh, pupa is very critical. Many people have attempted it, but uh, uh, a large scale uh, interest and s several self-help groups has to join hands together to completely reclimate this uh, waste and this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to incorporate technologies and several self-help groups to produce uh, high quality uh, protein sources and omega-3 fatty acid sources. Basically, we try to collect this, uh, dry it and sterilize it. We have a patented technology of uh, converting this into a uh, sterile silicone pupa at a very reasonable cost and after extraction of omega-3, uh, the leftover is being used as a uh, protein source in animal industry. So the solution, uh, the immediate solution for this problem is the converting uh, into omega-3 fatty acids and the remnant should be uh, utilized as uh, poultry, uh, as a protein source in uh, animal care industry. The advantage of this is that it is 50 percent cheaper than all the existing omega-3 fatty acids and the content of omega-3 is much higher. Uh, it not less than 45 percent is the omega-3 fatty acid content and we at our company Aspartica, we are able to get up to 62 per percent of omega-3 fatty acids in the pupa oil with the uh, supercritical technology. So silk, uh, likewise silkworm pupae mill, uh, interestingly the silkworm pupae, uh, the protein content is not less than 60 percent, uh, 65 percent uh, if it is properly extracted, if uh, fats are properly removed and uh, the pupae mill is better than uh, soya in terms of amino acid and it is also on par with 
uh, fish meal uh, in terms of uh, uh, amino acid profiles also. If you see the amino acid profile of uh, silkworm pupa in comparison with the soya and fish meal, uh, it is uh, much superior in terms of very important amino acids like cysteine, methionine, lysine and also aromatic amino acids like tyrosine and tryptophan is much higher than compared to soya protein which also acts as a very good antioxidant. So likewise we have a product called Eggmore Omega uh, which uh, by utilizing uh, ut using this in uh, poultry feed increases the omega 3 fatty acid content into in the egg by 3 to 4 times. Uh, this all these products are coming out of uh, silk industry waste. So coming to value proposition and the safety issues many people uh, uh, since we have been used to uh, con con consume uh, proteins and fats from plant sources and fish sources uh, there are just, uh, questions of safety but uh, it is 100 percent safe as I mentioned earlier that uh, silk pupa is uh, widely consumed even by humans in northeastern and Japanese countries and silkworm pupa finds its medicine in traditional Chinese medicine as a drug for diabetes also and it is considered as a GRAS material generally regarded as safe material according to WHO. And our technology, we use green technology without any solvents and uh, we have a zero waste discharge strategy where uh, everything is utilized uh, till the end. So what is the social impact of uh, this project? So uh, as I mentioned, 80% of uh, silk that is being dis discarded as waste can be converted into value and uh, which is agriculture which is providing to employment to about 10 million people in India. Uh, they, they, there can be price stabilization and uh, there can be 40 percent increase in their revenue. Uh, most of the circle industry is run by women. Our major goal is we are trying to set up self-help groups of women in various places. Already 10 self-help groups have been set up and these people uh, are being trained to collect this uh, uh, silk pupae and uh, convert it into silk pupae powder where from there we, we take it to our industry and uh, extract omega-3 fatty acid. and. Uh, uh, we produce uh, uh, protein uh, cake also and interestingly if there is a simple mathematical calculation if the entire silk industry waste is reclamated India will be able to produce so much of omega-3 fatty acids that is uh, sufficient to cater 29 million people for the entire year. So much of omega-3 fatty acid can be produced from this waste material itself. So uh, coming to the availability uh, about 26,000 metric tons of dry pupa can be converted. Uh, in Karnataka alone, we will be able to produce about uh, 8,000 to 9,000 metric tons of silk pupa. And uh, silk pupa meal, uh, there is a calculation of how much of omega-3 fatty acids and uh, pupa can be converted. And uh, everything, uh, all these uh, statistics, we are talking only about one variety of silks, that is Bombix Mori silk. And there are uh, several other varieties of silks also, which can be effectively converted into these value-added products. So now during the process of extraction we have come up with uh, one more product where we co-extract all other herbs along with uh, omega-3 fatty acids. All the herbs that are related to liver uh, are being extracted. Uh, so in, in order to reduce uh, the transportation cost and other, uh, mid, uh, other uh, unnecessary uh, logistics costs of uh, liver tonics we have come up with a 10 ml pack where 10 ml can be diluted into 5 liters. Uh, uh, and it can be used as a liver tonic where all the herbs, rela herbs uh, related to liver uh, which is uh, being widely used in poultry industry are enriched with omega-3 fatty acid and uh, co-extracted. This product uh, we are, we are uh, launching very soon. So these are different uh, uh, active ingredients and how they work. We will not go into details of this. And uh, right now we are uh, as an alternative we are also having several uh, feed concentrates, probiotics, uh, mineral mixtures, toxin binders, growth promoters in our company as of now. So uh, we are, this almost completes my presentation just uh, to share few of our uh, accomplishments. Our lab, we have a dedicated lab uh, which is certified by Department of Scientific and Industrial Research uh, which was uh, inaugurated by, by uh, Professor G. Padmanabhan, former director of Indian Institute of Science and uh, we received a global award for this technology of converting waste into uh, omega-3 fatty acid supplements. This was awarded by UNO at uh, California. Uh, this is our National Entrepreneurship Award and Top 10 Scale-Up Company Award by FICID, PwC and CNBC, our Outstanding Entrepreneurship Award. Uh, this is our award related to biotechnology process development uh, by Dr. Harshavardhan. And I will skip most, a uh, few other things. And uh, we, we have re been representatives from various uh, government agencies. Uh, uh, 
like our honorable MP had visited our uh, facility to understand more about uh, uh, byproduct utilization, and uh, this uh, proposal has been sent to central government also. So these are some of the activities that we do with the uh, sericulture department, creating awareness about the uh, byproducts and creating self-help groups and Silk Association of India and several other programs we continuously conduct. And now we are tying up with uh, uh, Ram Nagra CEO and uh, uh, several self-help groups uh, to uh, reclimate and collect the waste and uh, we will get semi-finished goods from these uh, self-help groups and which will be converted into a final product at our facility. So we are in discussion with uh, several investors now. Uh, with their support, we'll be able to produce uh, five uh, metric tons of uh, silk pupa, dry silk pupa cake. Uh, our target is October. So we want to, we'll be launching this product, uh, uh, low cost uh, protein source and omega-3 fatty acids pro source uh, exclusively from waste materials. This is my talk. Thank you.